You might not know this, but there are four different types of people on LinkedIn. First, the job seekers. Second, the professionals who found amazing jobs thanks to this handsome dude. Third, the entrepreneurs and thought leaders. And finally, the group we just love to hear from, people who can't shut up about their new job in tech. Um, <clears throat> jokes aside, each of the first three groups have distinctly different LinkedIn profiles because they all have different goals. Job seekers don't want to alert their colleagues, so they choose not to notify their network when making changes. Entrepreneurs and thought leaders intentionally include a lengthy LinkedIn summary because they know prospective clients need as much information as possible before reaching out. So in this video, I'll go over the five simple changes we working professionals should make to our LinkedIn profiles in order to set ourselves up for future success. Let's get started. Diving right to tip number one, drive LinkedIn traffic to your portfolio and social media profiles. The intro section is your most valuable real estate and LinkedIn recently added a feature that allows us to add a website to our intro. For example, I've added my no BS productivity newsletter here for easier signups. This is super useful if you have a side business, a website or portfolio you wanna show off. Case in point, Christine aka Chumbuns, Chloe and Kevin are creators I've long admired and they can probably get even more free traffic if they use this feature. Jeff, this video is for working professionals, not part-time creators. Fair enough, if I didn't have a website or YouTube channel, I would sign up for a free Linktree account, link to my Twitter, my Instagram, while starting to build out an online presence. For example, I found the best way to really understand the concepts I've learned at work is to summarize using my own words in an external blog post. And we can all sign up today for a free Medium or Substack account and start writing. LinkedIn profile tip number two, don't sell yourself short. Diving into an example, this talented connection of mine has analyst as a header in her previous role. But if we look closer, she was promoted before leaving. So the title of senior analyst is a more accurate representation of her skill sets when future recruiters come across her profile. Another awesome connection of mine recently took on an additional role within her team. While you wanna showcase all your responsibilities at work, this type of formatting might confuse future hiring managers and headhunters who are looking to fill a specific role. Instead, keep your core job title, the role you want to be most known for, and in the description, add the additional responsibilities, the 20% projects, to illustrate just how proactive you are. Pro tip, as someone who didn't have a portfolio, I used to think I had nothing valuable to share in the LinkedIn featured section. But don't sell yourself short. You might not have written a LinkedIn post, but have you ever been tagged in one as a thank you? You can copy the link of the post you're tagged in and choose to add a link in your feature section and paste that link. Or if that's not applicable, I used to just feature slide decks and spreadsheets I created for work by selecting add media. Profile tip number three for working professionals, two birds, one stone LinkedIn edition. This is my most recent performance review write-up I submitted to my manager. After making some slight edits and deleting the internal only information, I copied and pasted this onto my LinkedIn profile. Most companies have some sort of performance review process that occurs regularly. Could be quarterly, could be annually. If you're making the time to write down your achievements anyways, you might as well repurpose that content and showcase your impact on LinkedIn as well. This works because what makes for a good performance review document also makes for a good LinkedIn experience. What you did, the end result, and quantifiable data to back it up. So the next time you have a future deadline to submit a self write up for work, also remind yourself it might be a good idea to update your LinkedIn profile as well. Continuing the concept of two birds, one stone, tip number four is to repurpose your colleagues. We all know by now, word of mouth heavily influences purchase decisions and the recommendations feature is LinkedIn's version of a five-star review. AKA, if you're heavily recommended by others, you're gonna stand out among your peers. Problem is, most of us find it weird to randomly ask colleagues for a LinkedIn recommendation. But what if they already gave you feedback, say, as part of your annual performance review as a peer reviewer? Again, piggyback on this established process and send a message like, hey, thanks so much for being my peer reviewer at this cycle. Would you mind terribly if I ask for a recommendation on LinkedIn as well? There's no extra work needed. You can just copy and paste what you already have. If your company doesn't have a formal peer review process in place, no problem. Austin Belsack over at Cultivated Culture recommends the following. First, instead of asking for a general recommendation, send over a template and ask for feedback on specific skills you want to highlight. 
I'll link his full article and this template down in the description. Second, use a rule of reciprocity. I found this to be the most effective right after a project is completed, where it's more natural for you to say, hey, I learned a lot about project management from you. More than happy to write you a recommendation on LinkedIn. Is it cool if you do the same for me? And just in case this wasn't clear, you can go to any of your LinkedIn's connections profiles, click on more, and request a recommendation to kick off the process. LinkedIn profile tip number five, die a hero or live long enough to become the villain. I get it, some of the posts you see on LinkedIn are pretty cringe, but I'm sure you've come across a few you found to be genuinely helpful or inspirational. The fact is, users who engage on LinkedIn get a lot more views because number one, only 1.2% of all LinkedIn users are actively engaging in some way. And number two, you're more likely to catch attention from employers by showing up as a comment or post in their feed. Am I telling you to create a post right now? No. Start small and leave a thoughtful comment on one post every Friday afternoon for one month. Luckily for us, most users leave low effort comments like, hey, thanks for sharing and great tips. All we have to do is to take five minutes and come up with a thoughtful comment that adds to the discussion. And this could be as simple as sharing a personal experience, which we all have that's related to the original post. Rinse and repeat, your comments get more likes, you decide to comment more frequently, and soon you're confident enough to publish your own post summarizing a key learning you had at work. Venture capitalist Gary Tan says it best. Creating, you can only learn by doing. So don't let the idea get in the way of you starting. Once you create something, anything, then iterate to make it work and turn it into something really good. If you enjoyed these tips, make sure to check out my top five productivity tips for work. See you on the next video. In the meantime, have a great one.